everyone can hear me? Yeah? Okay. So hi everyone, uh, I'm Samuel Richard. I work for Can Am, uh, mostly on the conceptual design. Uh, sorry to disappoint if you were expecting Daniel Barbeau, uh, our management in IT. Uh, he, I am replacing him. He was supposed to do this presentation. But uh, if you do have uh, questions at the end of the presentation, um, I'll try to answer them. If not, we'll get back to you by email. So today we're going to be talking about uh, industrial 3D model integration for production purposes. So first I'd like to start with a brief uh, presentation of our company. So Canadian Group is the North American steel manufacturer. Um, the company was founded in 1960 in Saint-Gédéon-de-Beauce, where we uh, first started manufacturing steel joists and mainly uh, to uh, New England state customers. Uh, after multiple acquisitions and expansions, now we're a major uh, steel manufacturer in North America. Our mission is the pursuit of a better uh, customer experience. So our goal is to offer services that exceed our customers' needs, not only to provide a fabricated product. Our company is made of 4,730 employees, which are working from plants and offices uh, across Canada, United States, Romania, and India. So KNM provides uh, products in three major construction categories, uh, buildings, structural steels, and, and buildings. Uh, we also uh, provide pre-construction and project management and steel erection services to our clients. Uh, we target many markets, um, just as commercial, industrial, and institutional. So those are mostly low-rise buildings. We also go to high-rise buildings, which are more uh, multi-residential uh, buildings, and infrastructure and bridges. So on average, uh, Can-Am delivers over 10,000 projects per year. We have 25 plants in North America, adding up to a manufacturing area of 3.9 million square feet. Uh, the plant locations you can see are shown on the map. Uh, you may notice that we have multiple plants on the East Coast. Uh, here in the Atlantic, uh, the saint gedeon plant, the original plant, uh, serves this portion. Uh, we also provide uh, steel joists for about above 95% of the Atlantics uh, in the market. Um, <coughs> combined, we have an annual capacity of 860,500 tons of steel products. This makes us the largest manufacturer of steel components in North America. So here you see a list of our products, steel products that we do provide. So we have structural steel, steel joists and steel deck, uh, joist girders, up to Hambro joists, where, which are mostly used for residential applications, ham, uh, Murox panels, Equinox prefabricated buildings, purlins and girts, and then the rest are mostly uh, bridge products, so welded wide flanges, bridge girders, uh, orthothropic uh, uh, steel deck, uh, structural bearings, and expansion joints. But today, uh, we're gonna talk mostly about the top three which uh, generally Can-Am is most renowned for in the industry. So today's presentation, presentation goal is to demonstrate how Can-Am is using BIM processes and digital workflows to coordinate with customers' information and anticipate project needs. So we'll start with a question. What drove Can-Am to adopt BIM a BIM process 20 years ago? The answer is CNC equipment. It was probably the main reason that most manufacturers bought 3D software. We were able to fabricate steel components with minimal human interaction and labor. Initially, there was a lot of resistance felt by the front end process people, such as detailers, which perceived a loss in their productivity and efficiency. However, this technology revolutionized our manufacturing process Without it, without it today, uh, we would not be able to compete in today's market. So we can ask ourselves, is that all that BIM can do for a manufacturer? 
In today's market, we see more modern and complex projects. Um, as a steel manufacturer, we need to adapt to our environment. This on screen is the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, home of the Atlanta Falcons. It was construction, uh, the construction ended in 2017. Can-Am supplied and erected 29,000 tons of structural steel components. Uh, just a second, let me see the video, there we go. And the retractable roof is unique, made of eight interlocking panels, form more than 200 trusses that span over 735 feet across the length of the stadium. It was designed to open and close in less than eight minutes. We'll showcase some BIM processes that help k and achieve this type of construction. So how do we ensure the fabrication is precise on such an assembly? What kind of quality control methods could be used? In a 3D model, this would be just a simple node with multiple attaching members. Once you get to steel detailing, you get a piece that's not many steel manufacturers want in their shop. We find approximately 120 of these complex nodes on this project. So how do we deal with this? We use 3D uh, scanning inspection, laser scanning inspection. This is a great tool for quality control and complex geometries. It is a no-touch and non-destructive method. Uh, by taking multiple shots at different angles on a single piece, we are able to create a 3D scan or a cloud of points. Using a best fit method uh, of alignment, uh, a software can overlay the scan model with the detailing model. This creates a color error map, as you can see on your right. So you'll see a scale that's in millimeters, and green is obviously good, and red and pink, pink indicates points that are closer or further away from the model in relationship uh, to the detail model, I guess. You may notice uh, the, blue, uh, <coughs> the blue and the red on the top left member. That indicates maybe some twisting in the plates. There we go. So this method is very accurate. However, it may, you, you may have to take a closer look to interpret uh, the uh, results. So red is not necessarily bad, and green is not necessarily good. For green, look at the picture on the right. So most points are green, but you can obviously see the plate is deviated from the model itself. Uh, for red, you may have a sag in a member due to self-weight, or, or the overlay may not be done correctly. The best fit method of alignment using an algorithm that tries to match um, the model by finding maximum amount of points and uh, averaging out the error. So a long slender member, like you may see here on the left, uh, you might see some errors as we may see on the blue areas. So we have to keep in mind that bolt hole locations are most important for assembly. Uh, some compo components may have a bit of flexibility, so they may not be a problem on site. Also, this method uh, pr can provide good feedback to shop, well, uh, shop workers regarding steel assemblies tendencies. So la laser scan can be done uh, during the fitting of members for alignment. It can be done during welding uh, if uh, the heat might have twisted the members, excessive heat, or on site. But the earlier we can detect the assembly out of tolerance, the easier, uh, the earlier we can correct it, and if correct, uh, corrective measures are required, we can minimize the cost and the time loss. Once we get on site, we want to make sure that the steel components fit. Precision in co uh, of the connected members is very important on these types of large-scale projects. If the fabrication is not precise, the result may be major costs and delays. Uh, we do not want to be responsible for stopping the crane or creating delays in the schedule. As you can imagine, hourly rates on these sites are ex extremely high. So to our next example, how do you coordinate the steer erection with so little floor space? Can-Am has built over 50 major stadiums, and this is always a complex problem. Where do you lay down the steel? 
Where do you pre-assemble your parts? And how do you circulate with multiple cr cr cranes when the roof is closing in? The Falcon Stadium was our first experience with constructability review in the 3D environment. It is now part of our service we offer. The image you see here is a Navis works model using Cranny Max crane models. Working with the steel erector, we were able to review the steel erection as different, at different sequences. This makes construction more predictable and easier to plan. So as you can see, the obvious advantages, advantages of ensuring cost estimates, scheduled accuracy, uh, logistics planning, improving field productivity and safety, uh, optimizing of er erection schemes, and decreasing erection costs in general. However, at the end of the day, there's a human factor involved, and the, act the erector's experience is very important. The erector will make the final decision uh, on the ex execution. With Nav Navisworks and Primavera P6, uh, project management software, uh, we were able to plan in a 4D environment. The crane movements attached to the schedule. As uh, <coughs> we had a Can-Am representative that was on site, and however, the schedule was very dynamic. Many factors affected the scheduling or the site logistics. For this reason, it was not pe uh, we were not able to uh, keep the model up to date constantly. This tool did, however, provide great insight on the seal erection concepts, planning, and safety issues. The next BIM application is related to transportation. So we ask ourselves, at peak time, with more than 20 steel fabricators and 125 steel detailers working on this project, how do we coordinate the transportation of all these steel components? First, we merge all the steel components into a centralized Tecla model with IFC files. Then we could create loading diagrams as you see on the screen. Using a 3D trailer object, we could plan each load, position the center of mass uh, of the object and determine uh, the supports. This uh, facilitated coordination of the shipping of steel on the site and getting the transport permits. So, the few examples I present, prevent, uh, presented just a while ago were done for a unique and complex project. So, and they were also developed under a reactive manner. We had a problem, we had to resolve it. So we asked ourselves the question, if a BIM is effective for such a stadium, could we apply it to all can m products? So recently, we started work on what we call our uh, building engineering platform, or the BEP. Uh, we're creating new BIM-capable design and detailing tools so we can work directly with a uh, level of uh, development 400 models. Currently, we're targeting Joyce and Deck for this new platform since they represent our largest market share. There are more standard, there are more standard product, projects. Almost most of our customers for these products are, are uh, structural steel fabricators and they are detailing their steel with uh, LOD 400 models. So we see this as an opportunity. We are trying to evolve with BIM technology and create new digital, proactive, and adapted uh, work processes. At this time, we're able to detail steel deck and rivet with this new platform. We have rivet families for our add-ons. Uh, we have rivet families, sorry, and add-ons for our, our Can-Am deck and accessories. Uh, we can use the B BIM 360 collaboration cloud to work with our teams in Romania and India. We can also uh, create bills of materials and automatic emails and export to our production system. So before we started our BEP initiative, we mapped out a BIM project cycle. The end goal was, a, uh, was to be able to have manufacturing process where we could exchange data at any step. So if you see the smaller circle, the black arrow, uh, that would be our industry's uh, basic request for proposal uh, process. And the bigger circle that we've created, the yellow uh, arrows, <coughs> is our BIM process. So we want to apply this process to all our products, 
but this one specifically is for the Joyce and uh, for the Joyce only. If you see the glossary at the bottom right, you may also uh, recognize the Rivet uh, logo. Uh, we try uh, to implement most BIM-related processes with Rivet, but we're also working with other softwares according to our needs, such as Teclar SDS2 as well. So before we, we started looking to our Joyce, our deck, we uh, established four main objectives that we wanted to uh, achieve for our BIM process. So the first one, work from customer models with minimal inter, uh, human intervention through a standardized and integrated process. Second, share the LOD 400 models with customers to ease coordination. Integrate the supply chain at various stages, various levels of development, and various platforms. And redu reduce lead time from start of project to the production. We want to work with our customers to streamline and optimize data transfer at every stage of a project. So we start with our first objective. Work from customer models with minimal human intervention through a standardized and integrated process. The model you see here is a rivet model from the new New York uh, Islanders Arena. So we are able to import this level uh, LOD 400 model and start detailing deck within minutes when we apply our design tools. Currently, we are still working on a Joyce platform, which is more com a bit more complex than deck. So we have achieved this one. Our second objective, share LOD 400 models with customers to ease coordination. Once we are done design detailing the deck with Rivet, we are able to share our LOD 400 models with our customers. In the screenshot above, you can see the detailed deck in a 3D environment. This helps make coordination and approval with our clients seamless. It opens up new opportunities and new processes. And this is in the Rivet uh, model. So our third objective, integrate supply chain at various stages. So <coughs> identifying changes between uh, customer models has always been a struggle. Here we see BIM 360 uh, revision tool uh, with a cloud-based model. We can compare multiple versions or revisions of 3D models in a web browser. Green is an atom member, red is deleted, and yellow is a modified member. In this case, if you look at the red beam, it was removed uh, between versions 67 and 68. Not sure if you can see that. Text is quite small. And the yellow members were re relocated or modified. So in this tool, there's many filters that are available, and, and we're able to quickly find revisions in a big model within seconds. Uh, concerning our working model, we're also able to detect these types of, of uh, changes. However, we're still working to adapt our work to the revisions, and at the moment, the process only works for LOD 400 models. So we're still a work in progress. So if we come back to all of our objectives, uh, we've reached one and two, but we're still working on three and four. So the main goal of the BIM process is really to be able to pull and push information to and from our customers at any stage in the project. However, this is only part of our goal, our end goal. We want to adopt a fully digi digital supply chain. We want to create a work process with our clients based on the following four criteria. So a, standardized, a standardization of end customer requirements. Every partner on the project is building a different set of data. The more standardized we create between partners, the easier it is to commun communicate between our systems. Uh, digi digitization of project management workflows. All the information needed to coordinate a project must be done digitally. Organized, searchable, and available for everyone. Connected equipment and assets. So, in other words, tools or softwares that collect data about our environment and share it automatically with other equipment and humans as well. Integrated order fulfillment. So using the collected 
information to automatically trigger actions at all levels of the supply chain to execute projects faster and at a lower cost. To demonstrate this concept, we have a generic supply chain shown on screen. We have the supply side and the demand side. So we can identify Can-Am as the second tier uh, supplier and our steel fabrica fabricator as the first tier supplier and the end customer at the very end. So <coughs> our first or second tier customers could be general contractors, architects, or building owners. The idea is for the information to tra travel seamlessly up and down the supply, uh, the chain of, in a digital format. If each party between Can-Am and the end customer improves speed and efficiency in their exchange, the project lead time will be reduced for everyone. An integrated chain of information provides all partners a safer, more agile, and efficient environment. We've identified five major challenges in today's industry preventing us from moving forward as, as an integrated chain. So the first, uh, structure of data and information. For example, legacy systems are usually designed for a single or specific application. Most do not allow implementation of a BIM workflow. We need to adopt new tools and new technologies. Second, access to data. All collaborators on a project need to make their data readily available to all parties. <coughs> Our industry, we need have a tendency to share only the data that we want others to see. Understanding and defining of the business objectives. We need people to endorse the BIM process. We need companies to de dedicate resources and energy. Management should not see this as a short-term solution, but rather a, a long-term object objective. Uh, leadership capabilities. Patience from leaders and support to adaptation is necessary. Analytics and modeling needs to be viewed as more than a software exercise. And finally, organizational, uh, organizational, oh, sorry. <laughs> Organizational capabilities. Required skill sets for the future in the supply chain are different and evolving. So I'd like to invite everyone to have an open mind so we can face these challenges together. Uh, to build new standard processes which will, which will benefit all partners involved on a project. So together, let's build the information chain of the future. Thank you. Is there any questions? So you mentioned that uh, you are using Revit most of the time now, so you are not using Tecla anymore? Uh, depends. We use Revit, Tecla, SDS2. We use many softwares for different applications. Uh, we're talking mostly here manufacturing. So manufacturing, you do have Tecla and SDS2, or, which are detailing softwares that are mainly used in the industry and ourselves also. Um, for myself, I'm a design engineer. I, design, I do design build work. And we use mostly Rivet, right, for, for mostly, let's say, in the LOD 300 type models. Uh, but we, we like to try to integrate most we can with Rivet. But depending on the application, uh, you know, we have Tecla and SDS2 and other softwares, uh, depending on the needs of the product and the process. I mean, do you fabricate from Revit directly, so you can send the model to your CNC machines? So, no, we do not fabricate. So the only thing that we've done so far for our initiative is deck detailing. So deck detailing is basically um, seeing how many sheets of deck starting from a certain point. So we can actually uh, bundle and send requisitions to the shop and have um, them all laid out on a, on, on a plan. So we're not, as per se, detailing steel with Revit, but we are detailing deck sheets. Mm -hmm. So that is quite a, somewhat of an accomplishment because Revit for fabrication is, 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 is not yeah. seen uh, often. But uh, with our tools, we did manage to take models at a level 400, bring them into Revit, and apply our standards for deck detailing uh, make our plans and, uh, and, send, and, and have all that detailing of deck sheets only for the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for, for the stadium project, so all the project team was working in BIM or only Canam group? 
was working on BIM internally, then producing all the models and giving to everyone. So for, for bigger stadiums like this, usually you'll see more uh, Tecla uh, model being used. Uh, the 125 detailers that were used were all can -Am. So we have lo uh, very large teams in Quebec, in Romania, in India, uh, steel detailers, all working on this uh, same uh, model. But so, I mean, you received the model from the consultant, or you we, built we it from detail. scratch? So we, yeah, we, from scratch. Mm -hmm. So we, we detail that model. It's, it's difficult for a steel detailer to, to import a model from, let's say, a consultant where it's at level 300, where it's conceptual, and bring it to a, f to a detailing stage. Mm -hmm. Not many consultants will assure that their model is correct, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's always, <laughs> you, yeah. you ask for no a model. For consultants, yeah. <laughs> so they have a rivet model, they have, you know, and after that they, they'll have their disclaimer saying we do not take any responsibility for you anything that's case. not. So you, 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 you need to, to, to it's difficult to, to bridge that gap. We're trying and we're, we're looking into methods of, of making those models uh, in a detailed uh, state, but we're working on it. But usually we have to start from scratch with a technical model or a detailing model. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh. Um, you showed an example of a 4D um, constructability study and schedule. Yeah. You did. Is that something you typically do for all your uh, projects, or would that just be on specialized ones? So this was the first time done at these, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, we did it mostly for uh, seeing different uh, times of the schedule, where we have different configurations with the layout of steel and the movement of the crane, like the crane positionings. But as I mentioned, just uh, the dynamic schedule and every, like always changing, constantly changing, we weren't able to uh, always have it up to date, right? So it was great for concepts, it was great for uh, logistics and safety um, and planning at a conceptual stage, but we, so we did do somewhat of a 4D analysis, but we didn't keep it up to date throughout the construction of the building. And we also had a site representative that could consult this. But at the end of the day, it's the steel erector that's going to make the, the ultimate choice, right? I guess, uh, is that something you would do going forward, or did you find enough value with that? So, so it is a service that we do provide for more conceptual okay. uh, at the moment. Uh, to have it real time, ever changing, it, it might be I'm more. I'm just thinking up front in the planning yeah. stage. But if you want more information, I can I send it to uh, Daniel Babo, which has more of a vision of, for these things of what's upcoming. Mm. Thank you. Mm. All right. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>